genuinely outplayed. And that's, that's the frustration. Because when you find a survivor and the game is already 40% over, that's bad, okay? I know Otofu doesn't think it is because of snowball pressure. You saw what you saw what that Swift did to my Myers. So you know why snowball pressure doesn't exactly work as in the grand scheme of things as an argument. But yeah, and that's the, like what 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 gets what gets uh, what, what is upsetting in this game is when you lose by bullshit. Okay, and what I mean by bullshit is like them pressing the X button to use their dead hard. To get to a pallet. Like, that's bullshit. It's a boo-boo perk that shouldn't be in the game. If here's how, you, here's how you can tell the difference right away. There are two kinds of people that play this game. Those of us that know Dead Heart is broken, and then those of us that don't. If somebody does not... If, if there is a survivor out there that does not understand why Dead Heart is the best exhaustion perk in this game, potentially even the best perk in this game, then they are a bad survivor. Seriously. They are a bad survivor. If you don't, if you do not understand why Dead Heart is the best exhaustion perk, you're a bad survivor. Dead Heart is the best survivor perk because it adds an extra hit point. It adds an extra hit point for a 40 second cooldown. That is insanely broken. It changes the rule of the game. It. Mindbreaker, though. <laughs> Toxic killer, of course, bro. Why didn't I think of that? Why didn't I think of that, dude? Mindbreaker OP. Dead Hard single-handedly changes matchups. It changes the counterplay. If Dead Hard wasn't in this game, seriously, listen to me. If Dead Hard wasn't in this game, Legion would be an undisputed B be, be, be an undisputed P plus tier character. If Dead Hard wasn't in the game. But because Dead Hard's in the game, he's possibly the worst character in the game. Dead Hard literally changes the viability of characters. That's how good it is. If your killer has, if your character comes in and they have counterplay to Dead Hard, like you don't even need counterplay to the other exhaustion perks because the other exhaustion perks aren't as bad, and they're like situational. Like balance landing, you have to be out of fucking like, in sprint burst is like at the beginning of the chase. All sprint burst does is tell you that the guy doesn't have Dead Hard, and it's like, oh good, I'm so happy to see sprint burst. Not not to say sprint burst is bad because it, it's it's certainly not. But like th my point is that Dead Hard, a Legion would love to. Uh, when you're a Legion, and you see sprint burst, you go, thank God, that guy has sprint burst. Dead Hard is OP, for real. I want to see Dead Hard change before uh, DS, and all honestly. If there is one survivor perk that needs change more than any other right now, it's Dead Hard. Sprint Burst makes you so happy. Sprint Burst makes me happy too, bro. But yeah. If if I could pay if I pick one perk to, to nerf right now on Survivor, I nerf Dead Hard. Because DS, yeah, when you get hit by Decisive Strike, yes, it's unfair, and it's bullshit, and it needs change. Yes. When you get hit by DS, when you've hooked two people first, and you get hit by DS, that's bullshit. It is. But... But, like, if you... Sprint Burst doesn't really combo with Dead Hard. I don't think so. But, like, okay. My, my point is, like, nope, nope. If you nerf Dead Hard, you change the landscape of the game. And, and and people that are good at this game understand that. If you're not good at the game, you don't understand that. You, you think the anti-tunneling stuff is more important. Which, again, the anti-tunneling stuff is meta. But, like, it, if there is one perk keeping the survivor glue together right now, it's Dead Hard. For real. And you know what? If you don't believe me, get rid of it for a few games. If you run it. Get rid of it for a few games. Do, do here's here's what you need to do. You need to record 100 matches with Dead Hard. This this is what you do. You this is what you would do if you were trying to be really sciency with it. You would record 100 games with Dead Hard. But you that you actually have a chase in with the killer. So like not maybe not if you're I mean, if you're just gen rushing him. In fact, you don't even have to do games. Just like do chases with your buddies. Like just do chases with your buddies. Do 100 chases with Dead Hard, and just go until you get downed, okay? And then do 100 chases without Dead Hard. And then, I, and then do the averages and see the average in chase time. 
and then see what that averages, and then and then and then subtract it, and then see the and see the difference that Dead Hard provides. Should do a weekend without Dead Hard and see. That. I, I agree. I completely agree. Behavior should do a weekend without Dead Hard. Not even just exhaustion, just without Dead Hard. Dead Hard free weekend in this game for real, uh, for real. Dead Hard breaks the game more than people understand. Thazner even says it's the best perk in the game. Thazner, I don't know if you're still here. Thazner says Dead Hard's the best perk in the game. I, I still believe that the best perk in the game is Object of Obsession, personally. If you have Object of Obsession, that that break that, that breaks the game. That takes the game to a whole other level, especially when you're on Swift. The best solo queue perk is either DS or Dead Hard. But, like, the best perk in the entire game, all around, for Survivor is definitely Object of Obsession. That, that that transforms a match ridiculously. That is an S S plus tier perk that needs nerfed. But I still I still get rid of Dead Hard first. Even though I think Object is better, I still get rid of Dead Hard first. Because Object is rare. Dead Hard you see it every game. I believe the killer I believe an independent kill study by Killer Main said that ninety six percent of games have Dead Hard in them. One hundred games just recording if Dead Hard was in them or not. Ninety six percent. You see Dead Hard in like 96% of your games. That's insane. But yeah, I, I agree. They should do a Dead Hard free weekend. I but the difference in kill rate will be staggering. If you if you uh, get rid of Dead Hard, uh, kill rates go up 10% for every single killer. For real, I'm not I, for real. If you get rid of Dead Hard, Freddy Krueger will have a 90% uh, kill rate. Object Dead Hard DS. Uh, okay, not removed. Okay, object needs to go. Decisive strike doesn't need removed. Decisive strike needs nerfed. Decisive strike needs nerfed. Decisive strike needs a nerf to where when you hook one survivor, the other time the other survivor's timer shuts off, and then that perk will be fixed. That's the only nerf it needs. Decisive strike doesn't break the game. Instead, in in except in those rare niche situations. DS should be 60 seconds. The timer stays the same, but if someone's hooked, if someone else is hooked, your timer's removed. That's the only change D, uh, DS needs. Object needs a complete and total rework, and then Dead Hard, I don't know what you do with Dead Hard. Dead Hard needs one use. You could, Dead Hard, honestly, Dead Hard could, uh, Dead Hard could be one use and have an activation condition, and then the perk would still be, could, it would still debatably be the best exhaustion perk in the game. Dead Hard could say you have to unhook a survivor first, and then you only get it once per game. And it would still have an argument to be the best exhaustion perk in the game. That's how insanely good that is. But again, what pisses me off are the survivors that don't get that. And they say Sprinters. Like, there was a poll on a Facebook group I meant, and Sprinters uh, won as the best exhaustion perk poll by like 20%. The survivors are just bad. The survivors are just bad. Because they don't look at the game from a top level perspective, and that's the issue.